I feel bad for this episode. Guys, I, I feel bad that we're putting this out. No. I feel you, like that we get, couldn't. We got. We're, are we good anymore? No. It's, this is this is my fault. I said, hey, new Mario Brothers is coming out. We should do it. We tried. Koopa Cousins. <laughs> Hello there, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Confused Breakfast Podcast. Do you remember the pure joy of a trip to the video rental store as a kid? I do. The excitement of walking down the aisles, browsing the names and the artwork, and finally picking out the movie you were going to take home with you. Sure, it's hard to beat the ease of the modern era and streaming platforms where you don't even have to leave your couch. But there was something truly special about making that trip to Blockbuster, finding a movie that was made out of your favorite video game, and taking it home to watch. On this podcast, we revisit and dissect some of our favorite childhood movies from that magical era to see if they still move us the way they did as kids. I'm your host, Mike Schulte, and joining me as always, two evil, egg-sucking sons of snakes, Sean Pryor and AJ Vance. How the heck are you? I think a hard-boiled egg is my favorite food of all time. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I love to suck eggs. You love just sucking eggs. Yeah. Right out of the shell. Yep. That's where I'm going with this. I love it. (laughs) That, I made the decision. That's I'm right. Go just there with follow that. Follow the fear. I've decided to take that path. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. I love it. Love well, it. my boys, on this episode, we discuss the first Hollywood film directly based on a specific video game, a video game that happens to be one of the most beloved video game series of all time, a movie that had more problems than we could possibly get around to talking about on a single episode. Yeah. In honor of the new movie coming out on April 5th. We go back in time to 1993 to review Super Mario Bros. 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 Well, damn dang it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for another nostalgic journey to the past with the Confused Breakfast. Sit back, relax, and enjoy wherever you are in the world. Take it away, boys. Thank you. Well, if you are new to this podcast, we will be reviewing this movie scene by scene with a modern eye. But in order to do that properly, we got to talk about it nostalgically. Bring up those feelings we had as kids when we first watched this movie. AJ, tell us the first time you saw this movie, what your memories of it were, and what your nostalgic rating is. We wanted to see this movie very badly. Uh, We didn't get to go see it in theaters, I don't think. Um, When we did see it, I remember thinking literally in that moment, I am trying so hard to make myself like this movie. As a kid. That's that's an insane thought. As a kid, that's an insane thought. And I remember that. But I did. I was convincing myself that I really, really enjoyed this movie. I think I did a pretty good job. Um, and so I remember watching it and thinking, uh, just getting really excited every time I saw Something that was from the video game, you know? Oh, that's a bomb. Oh, cool. <laughs> oh, it's one of those bullets with the faces. Oh, oh, cool. See, you can see he's a plumber because of all the plungers. Ah. That kind of stuff. Yeah. And I thought it was just the coolest thing that could ever have been done. I was like, oh, yeah, that's Toad. Duh. <laughs> duh. Not duh. <laughs> Not duh. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, but as a kid, I just, I wanted this to be the greatest thing ever. And I kind of made my, convinced myself of it. So I, I will tell you, I, I'm going to give this an 8.6. Damn. Yeah. Dang. And it's okay. Cause as a kid, you're just a fucking idiot. I was just you know an I mean? absolute <laughs> dumbass. You have no idea what you're talking yes. about. No taste. Correct. Yeah. What about you, Sean? Nope. You haven't seen it? Go ahead. Dang. <laughs> well, 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 fun, damn well, funny it. story. I also have not seen this movie. Yeah, oh. all right. And here's and here's why. I I, I attest this to uh. much like the moon shoes story that I told. Yeah, where like remember but they're the, featured the, in this movie. The moon shoes came out and and everybody wanted them so bad. Much like people wanted to watch this movie so bad. Super Mario. I loved the Nintendo game. And uh, and, you know, and unfortunately, this kid buys the moon shoes first, and we find out they suck. So none of us buy them. I got lucky. One of my neighbors went and saw this movie because we were talking about it for ages. Go, nah. <laughs> he went and saw it and goes, 
bro, that was the worst thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and so I went, well, okay, cool. Then I don't have to see it. So I chose never to watch this movie on purpose. Full well knowing I love Super Mario Brothers. Yeah. Loved them on Nintendo, but I also chose to not watch this movie. You know, movie. like, we, we don't like the gatekeeping of movies. Like, and, uh, like, oh, you haven't seen Ace Ventura? Like, wow, you're not a person if you haven't Whoa. seen this movie. We're never, we don't really, aren't really like that. But if we were, this would probably be one of the first times where AJ, that you've seen it, I feel bad for you. <laughs> I feel bad. That I, you I feel saw double this as a bad kid. because he saw it and was like, "No, it's really good." Yeah. <laughs> I, AJ, <laughs> luckily, I didn't yeah. have a friend like AJ because I would have gone and see this if he was like, "No, it's cool. They got blah bobs." <laughs> thank, thank God, I didn't have some delusional idiot friend <laughs> like AJ <laughs> to come through and say, "You should see it, man. I think you it gotta should be, see this. It dude. should be great." I feel like you. Exp- there's bob bombs and there's there's mushrooms. Oh, there's bob bombs. I feel yeah. like if you if you explain to someone why you. <laughs> like this movie you're only explaining it to him while there's a tear in your eye yeah you're like i i'm i'm putting on clown makeup <laughs> while explaining why this is a great movie is that me yeah <laughs> no but it's got the bombs in it oh but they get in their signature red, really, red green suits you, you really princess should. it's it's <laughs> good I'm, movie I'm that guy talking to that girl at the party. <laughs> no, you like <laughs> that's the thing. It's like, no, you got to see this movie, bro, because it's so good. They have the bombs in it, and then they even make deeper references. That's all it is: the bombs. <laughs> they make deep. There's a bullet bill. <laughs> we, <laughs> we we got an executive producer on this episode. David Gould is stepping up to the plate to review this for us. He says, as an 80s baby and a child of pop culture, few things captured my dwindling attention span more than Super Mario Bros., especially Mario 6 Golden Coins. Okay, so you're talking about the games. Yes, that's what he's talking about. So when there was news of a Super Mario Brothers movie, I was ecstatic at the thought of seeing my favorite characters come to life in 3D. Not being in the streaming area, I was forced to wait patiently to see this movie come across my basic channel guide. Then one day after a grueling three-hour homeschool day, I had my chance. (laughs) Flipping to TNT, all my dreams were coming true as the title card flashed on the screen. And to say the least, I was disappointed. This was not my Mario, my Luigi, or even my Bowser. I truly believe that everyone has a movie that transforms you from a movie watcher to a cinema critic, and Super Mario Brothers was that film for me. My nostalgic rating would have to be a 2.5. Wow. Nostalgically, between AJ's just lying to himself and David Gould being serious, as a 5.5, which, oh, wow. So 5.5, it takes us to the bottom 10 of our nostalgic ratings that is just below uh, Bill and Ted's. Surprisingly, we did not like Bill and Ted's too much as kids. Uh, And just above Tremors is where this places it nostalgically. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, I feel like that this had a lot of potential, just like Tremors, and that and Bill and Ted's like, and, and Tremors ex- uh, exceeded, and so did Bill and Ted. But both this, of those, both of those went up considerably. This one just no. hey, well, we don't know. Well, Let's get to it. I feel like those, like what I'm saying, is those movies are closely related. Okay, except that just just didn't just just doesn't have any engine to it, which we'll get to. We'll get there. Well, we're gonna strip away that nostalgia. First, we gotta talk about all the pertinent, important details of the movie. Sean, what you got? Man? Produced by Roland Joffe or Joff and Jack Eberts. <laughs> Written by Parker Bennett, Terry Runty, and Ed Solomon. Credited. That'll change later. Cinematography <laughs> Cinematography by Dean Semler. Music by Alan Silvestri. Edited by Mark Goldblatt. Directed by Annabelle Jankel and Rocky Morton. Oh. Cast, Bob Hoskins, John Leguizamo, Dennis Hopper, Samantha Mathis, Fisher Stevens, Richard Edson, Fiona Shaw, and Lance Henriksen, barely. (laughs) After securing the temporary rights to the Mario brand from Nintendo themselves, producer Roland Joffe pitched the idea of a Mario movie to several production houses and writers. After the idea for the movie went through too many writers to even name, the film was eventually a combination of four different scripts. Uh, More on that later. Harold Ramis was also was almost hired as director, but turned it down due to, uh, uh, to do Groundhog Day instead. After all was said and done, Ramis recalled that as one of the best decisions of his career. <laughs> Eventually, directing duties went to husband and wife duo Rocky Morton and Annabelle Jenkel, who were known as the creators of Max Headroom. You guys know Max Headroom? I've heard it, but never saw it. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, 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 I mean, know of it. I know they did like references in like uh, Back to the Future Two yeah. or something, and that's about it. Yeah, I I was weirdly kind of obsessed with Max Headroom, even though it wasn't really my time. I went back and like my mom showed me episodes and stuff, and weirdly obsessed with it. I don't know why. Arnold Schwarzenegger and Michael Keaton were originally vetted to play King Koopa, but both turned it down. Dustin Hoffman was interested in the movie, and Danny DeVito was close to the part of Mario. Tom Hanks was offered the part of a Luigi, but he said, <laughs> nah, I'm Tom Hanks. No. <laughs> that's actually not what I heard. No, that's no he was coming off of uh, uh, like kind of stupid movies that he thought that didn't do very well. Well, he had like the and Burbs. Was, uh, Turner and Hooch. The, Turner and Hooch the, didn't Joe do very well. Mountain or whatever. Um, Joe versus the volcano. volcano. Yeah, he was coming off of those, which were kind of duds, and they, they thought that it could get him, but uh, he was smart. He was uh, no, smart dude, see, I don't. Maybe I'm hearing different information. I heard that. He he was thought for for the movie, but that the, the the directors were like, he's not a big draw anymore. He doesn't know what he's doing, so they yeah. passed on Tom Hanks. Right? What did Tom Hanks do the following year? Won an Oscar for Forrest Gump. Super weird. There you Super go. Super weird. Well, good on him. Then. I truthfully believe he would not have won an Oscar uh, for Forrest Gump had he taken the role in this movie. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Time will tell, and it did. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's already it happened, will, Sean. <laughs> time did tell, and you're right. <laughs> Directing duo Jankel and Morton. I just love saying that. Yeah, Jankel and Morton. Uh, they said that they came like, from the Tim like, Burton School of Filmmaking and wanted to make the picture darker in tone than the games, citing Batman or TMNT. Tim Burton's got a school? No. They just oh. they they were fans of his and fans of what he did with Batman and fans of what the people did with uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Cool, cool. It's kind of got that darker kind of New Love York it. tone, steam coming out everywhere. They uh, they really wanted that for a Mario Brothers movie. Yeah, of course. Weeks before shooting was to commence, <laughs> Disney swooped in and purchased the distribution rights for the film and de- demanded a lot of changes to the script, which angered the directors and almost caused them to leave the project. Disney took the film in a more fam- family-friendly route where the directors were shooting scenes with strippers. Hmm. Well. Uh, tie it. I mean. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Pulp. No, it gets worse. It gets way worse. <laughs> Filming began on May 6, 1992 and was not a great time for cast and crew. Bob Hoskins and John Leguizamo would both regularly get drunk on the set, leading to Hoskins' Getting injured when in a scene where the brothers are driving their plumbing truck, Leguizamo hit the gas a little too hard, causing the door of the truck to slide and break Hoskins' finger. Yeah. Oh, I just can feel that right now. Leguizamo would get a taste of his own medicine when he would be hit by a car on set, breaking his leg. And so both had to be like covered up by makeup and just like other clothing. I didn't know he broke his leg on there. Nobody respected the directors Mm. and would, and, uh, uh, nobody respected the directors, and uh, actors would just improvise their own lines in some scenes. So they they would they would give like extremely unclear directions to their cast and crew. So like Morton and Jankel, Morton would give one direction to somebody, and then Jankel would get co- completely different. Good cop, bad cop. Exactly, but they wouldn't. They, if you're a directing duo, you you know you want to be uh, like the Daniels. They, it's like they never communicated with exactly. each other before they decided to do to say something. I heard they like got divorced in the middle of the movie. I mean, it too. makes like, total sense. Like. This, this How, is, what a nightmare. It is almost sense, a yeah. product of uh, like a marriage gone wrong watching this movie, which is just like there's so many tones. We'll get to it. There's so many tones that just do not work and yeah. are trying to clash with one another. Yeah. Um, where was I? Nobody respected them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hopper got so like mad terrible. at the di- director sucked. <laughs> Hopper okay. got so mad at the directors one day, causing him to storm off the set, which prompted the directors to go after him in an attempt to calm him down, leaving almost 300 extras wondering what to do for almost three hours. The film was shot in an abandoned cement factory for most of the uh, Dino Hatton scenes, which is also where TMNT shot for the Rad as Hell Foot Clan hangout in Top Dollar Top Dollar's nightclub in the Crow. This is what we do. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> we did not plan that. Uh-uh. <laughs> I fucking go back and listen to TMNT, and you will see how dope the Foot Clan is. Oh man, God. Super Mario Brothers was released on May 28, 1993, and on a budget of somewhere between 42 and 48 million, the film only made 
38 point mil, 38 point nine million at the box office. <laughs> Didn't even get his million. budget back. I'm surprised it made that much. Well, yeah, keep in mind. So this movie was released on the exact same day that Cliffhanger came out in theaters. Stallone being huge at the time, and then two weeks later, Jurassic Park comes out. This movie stood no chance. This, nope. the, even if this no. movie was great, this would have been like a Boondock Saints situation where it, it, it just it got buried and then it became like it, on VHS th- sales went nuts and that still never happened. So yeah. yeah. Well, you guys know this podcast, and you know that we need your help. We're just three dudes trying to put out weekly content for you to listen to. But it's a crazy world out there. There are gazillions of podcasts that you can choose from. There's, there's, if there's a gazillion total podcasts, there's one million total podcasts that do the exact same thing that we do. Yep. And so we love you guys so much for supporting this, but we need your help on two things. We're going to pick a different thing to tell you every episode. What you can do while listening to this episode is to like us on social media. Uh-huh. Follow our Instagram, follow our TikTok, follow our Facebook, Twitter. We don't do anything there, but follow us there if you want to. Uh, that's super important for us to keep growing the brand. You can share our cool memes and our cool videos. That would mean the world to us. It's free and it's fun content. And number two, as always, check us out on Patreon. That is the best way you can support this podcast. You get access to bonus audio content every single week. And if you sign up right now, like you got access to it all. Yeah. And there's crazy amounts of backlog you can listen to. You can vote on upcoming movies. You can join our private Discord server. We're going to start watching movies live on Discord yeah. with you guys and interacting with it's you. It's going to be super so fun. It's going to be wait. badass. And we really want you to check it out at patreon.com slash confused breakfast. Up next, AJ does the research for us, tells us the ratings and reviews from fans and critics alike. What do you got, man? It's going to be red or it's going to be green. Is it Luigi? Is it Mario? What are we thinking here, guys? I'm sure none of us know. (laughs) It's the The tomato tomato meter. (laughs) Gross. Correct, Sean. Okay. 29% splat green on the tomato meter. From all the movies we have done, that is 10th from the bottom, as far as the critics are concerned, that is tied with airheads, hook, and heavyweights. Doesn't feel right, does it? Mm. Airheads, Hook, and Heavyweights. The critics think that Super Mario Brothers is the same as Airheads, Hook, and Heavyweights. I could follow all of those three movies. <laughs> I could I follow, follow all of them. Follow well. those. Yeah. Yeah. Um, audiences 100% agree at 29% <laughs> is the correct score. 100% agree uh, at 29%. Is, yes. Uh, is. Over 100,000 people agree <laughs> that this is a 29%. 100% of the time, I agree that it is uh, 29%. It, is, <laughs> it works all the time. <laughs> Uh, 4.1 on IMDb. And he guesses at what that ranking is. Uh, I, on any movie we've done, IMDb, where does that, where's 4.1 fall? I got to think it's like bottom 10. Bottom 10? I'm going to say it's near, I'm going to say it's near blank check. Well, you're correct. No, you're not. Because <laughs> cool. this is so dead last. <laughs> this is the absolute worst IMDb score of any movie that we have done. Wow. Really? Biodome was a 4.3. Three Ninjas was a 5.3. And Biodome's in jail. Yeah. This is a 4.1. Wow. Fan fan voted. Well, if this, um, if this could have been a... Should we sentence this movie or not? Right. This it probably been... could have been. Well, what you need for that is for one of us to love the movie. That's, that's true. That's a good point. <laughs> that's very true. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Um, well, apparently, uh, what's yeah? <laughs> no, uh, maybe my childhood self needed to be paid no, off. No, it's really good, guys. It's it's good. They've got babans. <laughs> <laughs> They're plumbers. No, did you see the boots? <laughs> All right, so we got some critics who were paid off to write a good review on this. <laughs> Daily News, Mary Flannery gave it an 88 out of 100. Nuh-uh. Even moviegoers who don't own Nintendo will thoroughly enjoy these superheroes. And chances are, this is, the on- this is only the beginning of their <laughs> film exploits. No, I really liked it. I don't even own Nintendo. What's a Tendo? <laughs> Uh, Mary Flannery did not own a Nintendo. You can tell from her review because she called them superheroes. And she called it <laughs> Nintendo. Uh, Hal Hinson, although we, we've heard from Hal before, he gave it an 80 out of 100. Jesus. The Washington Post. He said, who would have thought that Super, Super Mario Bros., the movie based on popular video game, could be such a treat? 
There are some, I'm sure, who saw the end of civil civilization here, but relax. This movie, which was directed by music video whiz kids Rocky Morton and Annabelle Jankel, is sweet and funny and full of bright invention. In short, it's a blast. Cool, man. Dude, that's great, Hal. Like, okay, right? so I say this a lot. Right, I say, guys? I say this a lot, and I think it's the antithesis of our show where like, we don't judge you if you love movies like this. In fact, it makes me like it yes. more if it is your favorite movie. But, <laughs> bro, dude. Hal Hinson, <laughs> uh, let, let's, let's think of it this way. He didn't, he didn't get paid off to write that review, but he probably shed a tear or two when he cashed the, his check <laughs> that week. He's like, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> Um, ten out ten out of a hundred. Um, <laughs> really? Wait. Ten ten out of a hundred. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. 10%. Ten out of a hundred. Ten percent. Right. Okay. One out of ten. I'm here. You get it. <laughs> <laughs> there are plenty of gags, but not not one laugh in the whole Farago. There's nothing original about Mario, and the absence of tension or an interesting narrative makes it tedious in the extreme. Okay. Accurate. Okay. Um, guys, I don't know if you remember our good friend Eric D. Snyder, but he did have something. Eric's oh, bad movies. Hell Eric, yeah. We Eric, haven't talked about Eric's bad movie reviews. Eric did have something to say in 2008 about this movie. Beautiful. Um, and let me see. I've, I want to find the right place to start here. Okay. I'm just going to take some excerpts. Every time Hollywood makes a new film based on a video game, i.e., every two weeks. I pause for a moment and reflect on the history of this misbegotten genre. All the entries so far have been lousy, including the ones that everyone always says is the best one, Resident Evil. Okay. Uh, but how did it begin? How did a seemingly fruitful source of movie inspiration turn so toxic? <laughs> <laughs> to answer that question, we must look at the very first movie adaptation of the video game, 1993's Super Mario Brothers. And here we see the right, that right from the beginning, this genre sucked. <laughs> here was a colorful, mischievous game full of whimsical characters and entertaining situations, and the Hollywood stink factory managed to take all of the fun out of it. Nintendo gave them a good opportunity, and they whizzed it, whizzed it right down the old pant leg. This is where it kind of ends it. Uh, the movie bears so little resemblance to the video game that I've uh, that I'm attempt that I'm tempted to think their matching titles is simply a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> what the executives at Buena Vista Pictures must have exclaimed? There's a video game called Super Mario Brothers too? <laughs> huh? What? Weird. <laughs> what? The characters are Mario and Luigi? <laughs> huh? Is it? Is the game about a cruel reptilian dictator who hates mammals even though he looks like one himself and who also hates evolution and wants to merge two dimensions and rule the world? <laughs> no? <laughs> then we're safe. <laughs> Tell the lawyers to stand down. <sighs> he did not like this movie. I love Eric. I know. Call us. Call us, please. We would just love that if you could. Uh, I only looked at the good reviews from uh, from uh, watchers, moviegoers. Good for you. And I just, I, I, there were so many of them, but I'll just give you, a, I'll, I'll just find one here. Uh, well, I'll give you two. Here's a short one. Ten out of ten. Jeez, it's not that bad. <laughs> 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 Come on, guys. <laughs> uh, said Thanos 6 in 1999. I'll admit that Super Mario Brothers, the movie, could have been better. That said, it could have been a lot worse. I personally liked it myself. Yeah, it should have been animated. And yes, Bowser Koopa should have been his fire-breathing turtle self. But overall, it was pretty good. He gave that 10 out of 10. <laughs> I, I personally liked it myself. Me, I did. Yeah. I personally really liked it. It's pretty good. Myself. I don't know why Perfect you guys thought rating. it was bad. Perfect rating. Okay. Um, <laughs> he said, wait, he said it couldn't, have, it could, it could have been better, but it couldn't have been worse. Yeah. But yet gave it a perfect score. But it's a perfect score. Okay, gotcha. Duh. Just checking. Just checking. Uh, here. Uh, this is, hmm. This hmm. is, this is a 10 out of 10. The haters are wrong. Okay. Warning spoilers. Oh, no. I have analyzed this move. Yes, <laughs> for a long time. And the only argument people put up when I bring up this movie being a masterpiece is that the CGI looks bad and that it does not, that it does, but for its time, it's above standard for the time the actors that play Mario, the Luigi, 
are perfect for their roles. They have the iconic accent you see the Mario Brothers have in the video game. Because they talk this in the movie. Video game. <laughs> it just says it's a me. This mo- <laughs> That's it. This move reveals their troublesome backstory of being two plumbers in the Bronx. They encounter thugs throughout the movie and starts a huge gang war inside the sewers. Beautifully crafted 9.5 out of 10. Is he saying move like bros? Like, I think he's deviating. <laughs> I think, I think, dot MOV. <laughs> yeah. I think autocorrect didn't correct move to movie or vice versa. So that's what he had to say about it. Okay, though. awesome. And yeah, and by the way, there were spoilers in there. Um, <laughs> in that rambling, incoherent, nonsensical oh, run on sentence. That was, yeah, he ruined the movie for us about the CGI and the gang wars. And the gang wars in the sewers. And the sewer gang wars. Oh, you're right. I, I forgot about that part. I don't even remember He's that. like, it's basically Demolition Man. <laughs> That's basically what he said. <laughs> Gangs in New York. Gangs in New York. Uh, yes, exactly. Well, Leo DiCaprio. <laughs> well, before we dissect this scene by scene, we got to talk about our amazing sponsor, Cedar Ridge Whiskey. We've been talking about them for so long that we finally got them to do something cool with us. Finally. Yeah. They finally they're finally like, "Why are you guys talking about us in every episode?" Yeah. If you've seen our Instagram lately, we are going to have a hand-selected single barrel confused breakfast whiskey from Cedar Ridge. Huh? We were out there a couple weeks ago, mm. we picked our barrel. It is unbelievable. It's we're not, not, not going to divulge any information no, yet. No, no. But what we want from you is that there's only going to be about 200 bottles. It's going to go real fast, and it's going to get shipped directly to your door if if you're in about one of the 40 states that they can ship to. So go to the link real quick in the notes of this episode. Click on uh, our mailing list, because if you want your hands on this, you have to go sign up, or else there's no chance you're going to get one of these bottles. We promise it's amazing, because it comes from the best whiskey company in the entire world, Cedar Ridge Whiskey. You have to check them out. Wait for our barrel. Go online right now, cedarridgewhiskey.com. Buy one of their barrels. Get the American bourbon. Get the American quintessential single malt. Get the collaboration with Slipknot. Fuck yeah, dude. Check it out. You Go to go to your local distributor, talk to them about some whiskey, or order it straight to your door. You have to do it. And right. that comes from the crew you can trust. Obviously, we drink maybe too much of this, and so we know what it tastes like. We and know. we know we like it. And when we picked our barrel... It's the best we've ever had. Yes. So the best I ever had. Cedarridgewhiskey.com. <laughs> Cedarridgewhiskey.com. Cedarridgewhiskey.com. <laughs> we have license to make a movie about a video game series that has sold more than 300 million copies, grossing more than $20 billion worldwide. It's beloved by so many, and the name alone will help our movie out. Let's take all of that and throw it in the fucking trash <laughs> and make the worst possible movie we can. Glug, 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 glug. Here we go. God. So we learn about a meteorite that kills the dinosaurs and splits the universe into two parallel dimensions. Oh, yeah. Near the present day, a mysterious woman leaves a large egg at a Catholic orphanage, and then she is captured by King Koopa. A few years pass, and we meet the plumbers Mario and Luigi. On a job, they meet Daisy, an NYU student digging under the Brooklyn Bridge for dinosaur bones. Luigi falls head over heels in love with the girl and asks her on a date. Oh, yeah. How about these graphics? I, they came on the screen, Mike, and I was like, oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, God. This the, is going to be a long haul. The, the video game itself from 1985, 8-bit, looks, looks better than whatever they just did there. Yeah. And it's so confusing. I don't understand why they even had to have this. And dinosaurs, when they're from Brooklyn, talk like they're from Brooklyn. Right. And everyone knows dinosaurs, are, they lived where Brooklyn was. Yeah. yeah. Everyone knows that. So... Let me let me take this back for just a second here, guys. Now, Sixty-five I'm, million years. I know I'm gonna. <laughs> well, no, no. Well, well yeah, kind of. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna ask you to do something that I know is very, very difficult. Okay, I want you to take out of your brain that we're talking about this movie and that, um, l- like it's not anything to do. And when we get a similar setup, okay, okay, I'm going to give you guys a movie premise. I just like I say, no preface to this. I have an idea for a movie, guys. I really think it would be cool if we talk about how the dinosaurs became extinct, right? Meteorite hit 65 million years ago, Sounds right? cool, yeah. Um, but what if, what if that meteorite actually split the dimension 
of the world, and those dinosaurs never actually were extinct. They were put into another dimension separate from what we are. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. And they also evolved just like we did, according to science. Yeah. Right? And this other place is very similar to our own, actually. And they've become like these like humanoids. And it turns out that there is one of them that has discovered this. And it's he his his intention is to take over those both worlds to merge these worlds back together. Right? Yeah. I mean, I Yeah, sounds cool. I think it'd be really cool. I think we get some really great stars. Yeah. And I think I think we could probably, you know, uh, work on the story a little bit and Arnold, maybe, you know, bring it together. Arnold Schwarzenegger comes to mind. Yeah. Just for Stallone. some reason. Stallone or something. I have a yeah. Stallone idea, you know, for, for vibe for this. Um, I'd, I'd love to get some some quirky comic relief in there. But, yeah, I think I think this could be a really great movie, guys. That sounds great. Hey, I'm Charles. <laughs> <laughs> I have the rights to Super Your Mario Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> How about we just merge these dimensions... Uh, and call it Super Mario Bros. Well, uh, you mean the video game? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Charles. I'm Charles. I'm Charles. I don't know. Like man. that's the thing. It's like it's like you know what? It's it actually not... is kind of like a. It's kind of there's there's a cool concept. You're not behind wrong this, at all. Okay? Well, I do think that there's a cool concept behind here, but right. But then they're just like, I bet the fucking Super Mario Brothers <laughs> well, could be perfect for this. Yeah. I don't know. Even even the the concept still falls flat to me because like the whole like why does it have to just be dinosaurs and like you know that that whole inclusion of dinosaurs is where this movie immediately is like off the fucking rails. It's true. What the fuck did dinosaurs have to do with Super Mario Brothers? Correct. They kind of looked like it. They're maybe but reptilian not, a little bit. I think there was like one world that in like some later on stage of Super Mario Brothers games where there was like a dinosaur world. Dino head. Otherwise they're all like fucking toads and shit and exactly. like turtles and and that's why I say think about this not in Super Mario Brothers. You're right. Think of it just like a, just another movie. Another movie pitch and it's not plumbers or or anything like that. It's just there's another world that's kind of like the dystopian back to the future in, okay. in number 2. Yeah. Like, Alternate universe. There's there's some there's some solid ground to be worked on here. And then we just vomit Mario brother culture that and pick out the remnants of whatever we, we ate the day before and that's what we put on this fucking movie. See that's the thing and, man it's it's these are this movie right off the bat is like what what are you doing? Yeah. What are like you're this and then you're a New York movie and then you're a movie about brothers who are plumbers. Mm-hmm. It is like 90 scripts yeah. all put together and be like Let's just do it. I don't know. That was one of the big things that they talked about. So there's actually a there's a great little uh, uh, small like 15 minute doc on this movie from I believe it's called the Video Game Library, and uh, he goes through and he talks about that a lot. And he's he literally says during like filming, not not even counting how many times this was rewritten ahead of time before mm-hmm. they even started production. This was rewritten almost every single day, every other day on set that Dennis Hopper, Bob Hoskins, everybody stopped reading the script yeah. and they would just show up. So whatever. They're Tell like, me doesn't what, fucking what matter at this today? point. Yeah. They even matter. said, they even said, I mean, they, people hated this movie so much. I mean, you, you don't hear a lot of times, you know, when you'll have like somebody be on a talk show and they'll be like, tell us the worst movie ever made. They're like, I'm not gonna tell you what movie. No, 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 I like it, it. Was it was bad. It was a I, tough one. And this every actor is like outright going. That was a shit show, and I fucking hate and it. And you never hear that. Really, you never hear that. Never hear anybody really talking shit about anything they've done in their career. Go you ahead. talked about that Dennis Hopper thing. He was supposed to be on set for five weeks. He was on set for seventeen weeks oh to make God. a movie he could care less about. Yeah. That he's like, well, we're here. Like, we got to get this shit done. You can imagine what that ex. This is Dennis Hopper. Yeah, and he's. This is probably the worst. I hate him in this movie. He's terrible in this movie. It's because he's just like, I don't care. Yeah, it, it's like you can tell he's trying to. He's trying to dedicate anything he can to this <laughs> character and try to make it like unique. And like, <laughs> he's like, oh, cool. So like, I'm like technically Koopa was like a big turtle, right? It's like, no, he's a Tyrannosaurus Rex now. Oh. Okay, well then I you like well then I maybe I'll do like some Tyrannosaurus Rex like kind of you know features or movements. I'll keep my arms up kind of tight or something like that. And it's like yeah, you can do whatever the fuck you want, Dennis. Just you know, (laughs) just read the lines. Just just read our lines uh, that we wrote today. 
Okay, that's all we fucking need you Did to you do. You read the second revision from today, or yeah. which one's See, what that's the going thing on? with the cast in general. I think because I think Dennis Hopper is like good for this role, mm-hmm. uh, theoretically. You know, like he's a good bad guy. Like I like him in Speed. You know, I like him in mostly most every movie. Uh, fucking Waterworld. You Waterworld. Know? Yeah. Um, I think he's playing pretty much the same character. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But there's no substance to it. That's mm-hmm. the thing. Is like they are good performers, and I even think Bob Hoskins and John Leguizamo is almost perfect casting I mean, at this time. I think they're for doing a Mario and Luigi. I don't know who's better. I really don't. I Danny was, DeVito made Danny me DeVito go. Well, might have been that great. might be kind of cool. Yeah. Sure, right? But like <laughs> that. In all honesty, there are moments of this that I'm like, I like their performances. They're even great at, together. At times, and I think they they bounce off of each other well. I'm just like, man, oh man. There's, I I enjoy those aspects, and then you just get unfortunately pulled right back in to the story. Yeah, and there's, and they are trying their hardest, and they, I I really want to commend all of the actors in this because getting new scripts every day must be a goddamn nightmare and to try and keep as a, an actor I yeah mean. and trying to keep a, a tone there's no there's no tone to keep <laughs> no if you keep changing it up Correct. you know especially if you're getting directions from one director and the opposite from another yeah how do you do that and they're just like well we'll just do our own thing yeah we're just get fucking hammered every night and <laughs> play the on fucking set movie. they're yeah. taking they're taking shots of scotch ooh, yeah like, ooh, here's a prop <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> the scotch. no i don't want the scotch i yeah. want in my house so that my wife will hate me forever i want a rack of plungers yeah <laughs> Disgusting, non clean, different size. There's a different size plunger for a lot of different jobs. That's right. That's true. And I want the three that Mario has in his room. I want them on my uh, on Res- the wall. Respect. Yeah. Respect. I want the bomb. I want the little bomb guy with the Reebok shoes. Yeah. It's so fucking Dude, awesome. <laughs> is that? We'll get. Uh, we'll, we Sorry. remind us to talk Sorry. about this. Sorry. Remind us, listeners. Please. Um, comment, <laughs> comment, like, guys. Through comments subscribe. down below right now, so you can make, make sure to remind us about. Well, make, make sure you uh, hit the bell. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, Mike, did you just change the script on us? Yeah. <laughs> did I? No, I'm just kidding. I want. Oh, you guys saw we were doing Super Mario Bros. It's Street Fighter. Oh, oh good. Thank goodness. <laughs> same notes. <laughs> Thank God. Uh, yeah, it's the same notes. I uh, know. I want the. Um, uh, I want the boots. I want, okay. the, I want, the, I want the jump oh, yeah. boots. The moon, the moon shoes. Yeah, well, yeah. That's what I want. Uh, when when we're talking about the the setup of this movie and how they're plumbers and like it's like oh yeah they're plumbers. Before we get yeah there, can we, can I just say one thing? The whole like sixty five million years ago, and then it says twenty years ago. <laughs> On top of like that. It's just like so. Is it sixty five million? Is is it twenty years ago from the sixty five million years ago? <laughs> or I guess I'm just gonna have to put this together in my own head. <laughs> but 20. then none of this makes sense. Yeah. I'm gonna drop an egg off to this monastery yeah. and then go in this dark alley. And Dennis Hopper, our villain, is gonna be there with decorated general suit on for no fucking Which reason. Which is never once talked about or no. ever mentioned and then, ever again. And then the walls fall down. I'm like, well, I guess that takes care of that. <laughs> <laughs> cool. We don't have to worry about that anymore. Is that what's going I don't know what's going on. There's Yeah, there's there's nothing. There's- and then we get Mario and Luigi, and we're saved a little bit. It, it's just funny to me, this world that they live in where, um, like, you know, if let's say, okay, let's say AJ's hanging out at his house, and he's got a leak, a uh, plumbing leak, you know, and he's like, He's like, shit, I, I can't fix this myself. I need a plumber. Where he makes a phone call that basically just alerts all plumbers to and gives them the <laughs> yes. address. And they all go there, and right. the first one there gets the job. The chaos. Yeah. What <laughs> fucking world is this? What is this world that we live in? I hate it. I don't want that world. I think of that happens for like electricians. What if it happened for realtors, Mike? It'd be terrible. You'd be like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and, and even their like, banter doesn't make any sense. Luigi's, <laughs> Mario goes, take a left. And instead of taking the left, Luigi takes a right. He's like, I got a feeling about this. They're like, no. The fuck is that the supposed address to mean? Is right, the address <laughs> is literally to the left. I literally map quested it. That's the street. <laughs> Take a left. He, so he takes a right, a right, and then a left. And, and arrives where they're supposed to arrive. Nope. Right. That do, the <laughs> right, right, left. So it was around, it was, a, it was down the street. It was, it was down, it was four blocks the opposite direction of where Mario thought it was. That's, that's upsetting. They could have walked without taking the right instead of taking the left. Yeah. Pretty much. They, 
this would have been a lot easier. There's another issue with this world. Um, you know, Daisy needs a payphone. She walks 10 miles. Maybe 10 miles away just to find the payphone. Yeah. That, that's the one payphone in town. Yeah. Confusing. And all of Manhattan. Um, were they just all busy with just like people who are jerks? But then she finds the Luigi, the one nice guy in town. I don't get it. I, I really do. It. Like, there's one moment I liked a lot where they, they he, uh, Luigi's on the phone first, and he's like, "Oh, call and see if we got any messages. See if we got any jobs." And he calls, and there's like someone screaming, "Like, we need all plumbers down here right now!" And he's <laughs> yeah, like, I told oh, you. Shit. I'm like, that was kind of good. It's yeah. the dispatcher that says, yeah. "Every plumber ever, come down." I like that kind of subtle joke in there. That was kind of fun. <laughs> we're yeah. good. We're good. <laughs> yeah, we're all right. Okay. I like I like the the woman who plays Daisy a lot. Samantha Mass. I think Mathis. she's really good. I know her and uh, John Leguizamo had a thing after this. I think yeah. they were married for like two years after this or something. Samantha Mass- Mathis has been in a movie we've done. Do you know what it is? Girl that plays Daisy, uh, she was Courtney Rawlinson in American American Psycho. She was the one. Yeah, uh, she was yeah, the buddy's yeah. girlfriend that that he it was, was his fiance. On with. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. She, she was well rock and roll. Not really a well known name, but like still acting, doing a lot of stuff. She's beautiful. I thought she was beautiful. I thought she was great in this movie. Um, she might have been one of the only people I actually believed their character for the most part. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I agree with you. And then you get. Um, like oh we we better have we better have the um like construction tyrant come down scarpelli scapelli scapelli got to have him come down like okay why that's it there's no why? rhyme or reason of why he doesn't want them there i need uh, my guys need to be building it's like well your building's over there <laughs> We're just digging right here. What the hell is going on? I don't. I don't understand it at all, guys. Nope. So there was a there was a version of the script who that somebody wrote. I forget his name, like Rick Morrow or something, who was an Oscar winning screenwriter. He wrote a like dead ass serious. Uh, I think he wrote Rain Man actually. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he wrote a dead ass serious version of this, and I think a lot of that was taken from it. Like the Sc- Scapelli corporation was supposed to be like the kind of baddie villain in this i see and it's like why are you so we're gonna just keep that element in it but then f- totally fucking for it's every every aspect of this every plot line that gets brought up except for the necklace and daisy yeah are useless it's really the only <laughs> constant throughout this whole thing it, like it doesn't you can tell like it's I never. I don't know if I've ever seen a movie that's so apparent that it was rewritten so many times. Yeah. Because it was it was rewritten by several different people. Um, uh, I, I was five, six, seven times. Yeah. Before it actually went to production, and then bought by Disney yeah. right before production. Correct. And so many changes were made. And they said you have to change this. Yeah. Help me out real quick. When uh, so Daisy was the human in the egg. Correct. Yeah, I guess yes. so. And did at any point do you ever see this piece of meteorite? The necklace, like, is that dude? Is um, the first time yeah, she puts on, it on the thing? Okay, it's yeah. So you're it's telling on the me incubator thing. You're telling me that <laughs> these nuns who don't believe in evolution just saw a baby <laughs> saw just saw a baby get hatched from an egg, no concern whatsoever. Said, well, we're gonna take this baby. Oh, and this little piece of rock. I'm sure that she's gonna want this on a necklace when she's 20 years old. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna keep this little piece, and we're just gonna. Make a necklace out of it, and we're just someday we're gonna get instead of giving her a holy crucifix, we're gonna give her a piece of meteorite. Yep, because we think that's gonna be important to the plot later on. Yes, we we have this uh, very mechanical, almost futuristic incubator that showed up with an egg inside that hatched a baby, proving that evolution is real. And now we've committed our lives to this. You, you know what? You could even argue that uh, amphibians. Or like, or like snake-like creatures are like a, a prominent uh, representation of the devil in mm. Christianity, and so coming from an egg, they might even just like throw it away and be like, Into "Oh, that's obviously the ah. devil." And do you know how many fucking necklaces I bought in my life between age zero and twenty, <laughs> and that I lost? <laughs> how does she still have this fucking how does necklace? She still have it. It's the only thing I have from when I was an orphan. Do you know how many pairs of puka shell necklaces I bought oh, in college God. that I lost? Is so many. How they've, does she still have this? They've grown their bodies back and cr- and crawled away. <laughs> yeah, All those puka yeah. shells. All those puka <laughs> shells. <laughs> My friends, lately social media has been getting me down. You're seeing all these other people succeeding and at their best. 
Makes me feel not good enough. Seeing negative comments online about things I dedicate my whole life force to, like Vin Diesel content on TikTok, it kills me when people are yelling at me. I know social media is not good for me, but I keep punishing myself with it. Whenever I fall in a kind of funk like this, I make an appointment to go back to my therapist immediately. Learning things like comparison is the thief of joy or talking it out as to why I'm so compelled to pick up my phone every 30 seconds in hopes of seeing some red notification bubbles. It's crazy, but these are things that I need help with and using therapy deepens my self-awareness and understanding. We don't know what we truly want or why we react the way we do until we talk things through. If this sounds like something you want, better help is here for you. They connect you with a licensed therapist who can take you on that journey of self-discovery from wherever you are. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time if you don't like them. No additional charge. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Confused Breakfast today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Confused Breakfast. Thanks so much to this great company for sponsoring us. If you want to help yourself and support this podcast, check BetterHelp out today. Link in the show notes. Now let's go back to this movie that really sucks because we're going to need therapy after this. Oh, come on now. Yeah. No. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Scene two, guys. That night, they go on a double date and visit the dig site after. There, they find two of Scapelli's men opening up some water pipes, sabotaging the site. Lugie and Lugie, <laughs> Luigi and Daisy grab Mario to help fix the leak. Iggy and Spike show up and kidnap Daisy. The boys follow them into an interdimensional portal into Dino Hatton. I do, speaking of um, Daisy and Luigi, I really, for some reason it works for me. I like their chemistry a lot. And I think they they're great on screen, and it gives it gives Luigi a um, like I guess a purpose to try and go to this dimension to save her. We do need that, don't we? I wish I guess we do need that, but we in in any other movie maybe we probably wouldn't. I wouldn't probably need like any romantic connection, but I, I do like that about it. You gotta have some reason to chase her down the rabbit hole, if you yeah. will. Like I guess, but at the same gotta time, gotta get a dick wet. Yeah. You're, you're right, absolutely. He's a plumber. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so. And that's it for us today, guys. <laughs> we well, finally got to the joke we've been waiting for. Gotta He's an pipe. Italian plumber. He's got to <laughs> get his noodle wet. Oh okay. My God. So <laughs> I want to learn more. I don't even want to know about Daisy and Luigi. I want to know more about. Mario's fucking skill with women. Yeah. yeah Cuz we learned in this whole movie but his date even though he wow. even though he, he even though he Gunga. he looks kind of like a uh <laughs> kind of a skeezy landlord standing behind Luigi the whole time he's like hey, hey, you know yeah, hey, hey, that's that's good today. Hey, yeah. Tomorrow's the first. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Ooh, hey, uh, <laughs> hey, uh, hey you want to you want to come out to dinner? Well, we we can have some have some pasta. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of what's going on here. I'm just not a fan of it. But at the same time, he's got some serious pull. He's got game. Um, especially with, like this Daniela, which uh, Peach doesn't exist nope. in this world. <laughs> um, we just, we, hey, hey, what about Princess Peach? You mean Daniela? Nope. That's not <laughs> nope. what we mean. Daisy. Is there ever a Princess Daisy in the things? Later on in some of the video games, uh, I remember seeing uh, Daisy, and now, she's uh, she's in Mario Kart and stuff like that later on, too. But now, isn't Mario's technically like the main character of Mario Brothers? Correct. And Mario's the one trying to save princesses, right? Correct. Yeah. So let's make it Luigi this, yeah, this yes. time. I think let's so. Let's make it Luigi in this game. And even when they're not when they don't have their attire on later later which is like the iconic attire the red sort and of. green they're wearing like opposite <laughs> colors yeah like bob hoskins until they get there mario's wearing like mostly green yeah and then luigi is wearing like a red hoodie all the time what yeah what the fuck is going on exactly there's there's it's there's zero continuity like there's there's no re like if you oh well we we don't want to be too referential to the source content what? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I'll <laughs> call it something else then. Yeah, then yeah. I'll say, I'll say it right now. Like, I appreciate an, an adaptation of something. Yeah, being like, uh, take, take, take your creative liberties. You know, D do something different. Do like a, a weird kind of take on this iconic IP. I like that about this movie, uh, along with like one other thing, and that's it. <laughs> but yeah. I, I, I will give it, pra I will give it praise for that. You know, just like it, it, it 
took something and it fucking ran with it, you know? Yeah. Uh, but because trying to compare it to like the original IP, I feel is like, okay, but like it's, it's its own thing. It's a movie, not the game. But still, you probably would have been better suited to follow the kind of uh, uh, effects and uh, att- attributes of the game rather than your six stories that you had yeah. crammed into one. Yeah, there's there's a there's a difference between like oh, we're gonna make some references here and there to like hey like why not have some plot points that are based on the video game yeah. and then then go from there you know and nobody you have you have seven different people rewriting this uh, well you have you have about eight eight or nine different people doing seven re, re rewrites and it just becomes an incoherent mess and that's all we get. Let's yeah. call them Lario and Muigi. Okay. Yeah. Do you think that's cool? I, I think no, that that's... No, but yeah, I'm down. <laughs> it's just such a terrible idea to make this into... They don't... The The audience for this is kids. Why do we Why do we want to make this into an adult movie? You know, like, it, it, it'd be like making a Sesame Street movie that was that's, like, R-rated and a horror, <laughs> a horror film that the, kids can't watch. The SNL with... Uh, What's his name for Stranger Things? Oh, dude, when Oscar. that that Mario Kart with Pedro Pascal, <laughs> oh yeah, 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 was fucking amazing, <laughs> amazing. If you have not seen that, no, Mike, I you need to go that. watch that. Oh my god, it's great. And they're just—it's just so funny to me that they're they're in this tunnel, Daisy and Luigi are, and they're like, "Oh no, who are these guys that are damaged that are in a in our dig site illegally after hours causing havoc?" Oh, it's easy to know who they are because they're wearing Scapelli jackets with <laughs> logos on them. They're wearing, they're wearing <laughs> jumpsuits that say Scarpelli on the back. Yeah, because, you know, just, hey, when you go down there, yeah. when you break all those pipes, make sure you're wearing Scarpelli gear. Make sure yeah. they know that Scarpelli was there. Yeah, make sure they know it. You got the stuff? Make sure you tag everything in sight. I want everyone to know that the Warriors Scarpelli were there. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? Like, yeah, like, don't be discreet. And by the way, don't wear black. Wear white. Because we want to make sure everyone sees you want running away. We got to make sure. We just got to make sure, you guys. Uh, so All right, they, go ahead. Will they get in? Are we get going into uh, Dino Hatton right now? We're going to go into scene three. That's Let's where we're going to Dino Hatton. Let's do it. So yeah. King Koopa is in charge of this dinosaur world and has the plumbers imprisoned while sending henchmen out to find the missing piece of meteorite needed to merge dimensions. The Mario brothers are imprisoned but escape and end up working with Spike and Iggy to get back to the city and find Daisy. One other thing that I'll say about praise for this movie is that these sets are pretty incredible. Like this, this world, this Dino Hatton, looks pretty great. And uh, like even the club scenes... Uh, all the extras, this looks like it has fucking scope. And it's just like the story that inhabits yeah, it yeah, is yeah. just nothing, you know? But like it does look beautiful. It looks great. The, my, my only issue with it is that like if this is Dino Hatton, is it underground Dino Hatton? No, it's 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 Another the dimension. other dimension. It's the other dimension. It's the other dimension. So they've gone I'm through the dimension and then they've come out of the underground into... The same place, but in a different dimension, right? It's but the, and and again, that's where I'm like, it feels like it's some underground dimension. Well, let me ask you this: so, um, up until just recently, King Koopa did not know that there was an alternate universe, right? He just thought this was Dino Hatton, right? He just said this is what my place is, and and then he found out later that oh, there's another one. Like how like how did he know that there was another alternate universe other than just recently figuring this out? And if he did, how did he if he didn't know about this, how did they know to call it Dino Hatton instead of Manhattan? How did they know that there was a place called Manhattan in another division, uh, dimension? How did they why did they build a Statue of Liberty in a completely alternate universe? I, it, it's literally it's the laziest, dumbest plot I've ever heard in my entire life. Well, and it, yes, um, <laughs> but that again is it's that's, the same it place makes, but different. But it's different. It's the upside down world. Ah, ah and <laughs> but see, it's not upside down world makes sense because it's another dimension in the same plane of existence. Yeah. This is like you might as well be in a whole other universe. It's the same place but shittier. <laughs> Get it? 
Um, but, <laughs> like that's that. That's again. What was I gonna say? Like, and and again, why is it now? It, it's now twenty years later. Here's from when he was there originally. Yeah, so he was there. He was there. How did he get there? And how did he get back? Is there and always this also, portal? Why is it twenty years later, and now this Iggy and Spike are running around are there, trying to grab a twenty-year-old woman rather than just a baby? Can't can't King Koopa just take all of his people? Go through the portal and right. take over the world. Why do you have to merge? Why these do we have two to merge dimensions? Them? You could just go through the portal. You can just go through the portal and make that your new world. Yep. <laughs> I don't get it. I hate the score. Make a better movie. Oh. I fucking hate the score. So make a better much. movie. Make 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 Un- there you go. Unnecessarily Found whimsical, it. stupid like theme, and then like they they get the Mario they even, Brothers. They even fucking play the theme song in the beginning. In the beginning, but that's Why? it. Why? <laughs> but that's it. And then like this score is just. I, what do you guys think? Are you on? Are you on with me? I just it, <clears throat> the, the the theme the theme sucks. Like the underlying like uh you know like oh someone jumped on their jump boots like and that's exciting. That Ooh. those cues are good. But the theme is so stupid. Half the time, I think the themes from this are from Tommy Boy, and half the time, I think they're from Batman. <laughs> yes, I'm yes. serious. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there are serious. Like, go back and listen to when they're driving through New York and stuff. With like, come on, we gotta go. We gotta get there faster. It's, We're plumbers. We can't stop for a meal on the way. It's like MediaCom today. It's almost like, three ninjas. They give you like a three hour window, but they're driving to this place, and you hear that like that Tommy Boy. Fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fucking P- Peter <laughs> Pfeiffer. Jethro Tull. Jethro Tull. Um, no, I, I, I don't know. I, I, it's, it's really hard. I'm, I'm gonna. Okay, from here on out, guys, I'm gonna really try not to just like rip into this okay. movie. No, that's okay. I have, a, I have a question for you. Just please. To, we're not talking about whether this movie's good or bad. Yep. Who is a who is a more evil old lady? This old lady when they get to Dino Hatton, that kind of fucks them over, or the sweet old lady in the motorized cart and Dumb and Dumber. Mm. Who's more evil? Ooh. Well, I think I think I think you have to be real, real evil to perform evil shit and then not even talk about it. Like the sweet old lady on the yeah, motorized scooter. Yeah, she's like she's went home. She's like cool. She's I like really, deuces. Idiot. Yeah, if you if you <laughs> needed uh, taking your hat too, two twenty four packs of of Bud Light more than a thirty year old man did. Yeah, I'd say you're pretty goddamn evil. Pretty I'd say you're you're cooking evil. up some schemes. On that motorized car. Yeah. I love it. This this lady though, this lady's hardcore. I gotta say. She's just she's just ready to like what the hell and does she have though? What the hell what the hell does she have though? It's just like it, it looks like a like a cock gun that she that zaps people. I don't understand what the hell it is. Dino it doesn't Hatton's even do a anything. Rough place, dude. It, it's a rough place. It's a rough place, man. Damn. I'm surprised that uh those boots could lift them titties. With them bitty from uh, damn titties from that woman who took who actually took the stone. Yeah, I'm surprised. Those things. No, those are powerful boots, man. That's yep. a note that I had. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a, a note, note that I had. <laughs> it's like I don't know how those boots raised those heavies, but they did. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> if if okay, I I've, I had enough time going away from talking about this movie uh, in a bad way. Can we talk about how <laughs> terrible of an actor Toad is? Also, how pointless of a character Toad is. I like is. him. You He's, like you like this guy? I like him. I wish that, I wish there was more of him. Honestly, oh, I, I wish w- there was more of him as this guy, as as Toad. Yeah, um, I think doing this to one of the, like it's he's like Toad's like a kind of a main character in the game. Very right? important. Who re, who avails no resemblance to what Toad is in the game. His character in the game looks in the game just the name Toad. He's just got a like, oh, turtled his, haircut, and that's about Toad. it. Apparently, but he doesn't even have that in the game. <laughs> yeah, he is just a turtle in the game. This is I I disagree. The 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 guy that played this his name is Mojo Nixon. He's, he's got a musician. A, he's he's a got musician. a YouTube channel. It's actually pretty cool. Check I just, it out. He's just a bad actor. It's just like putting fucking Mr. Body in Clue. Like, oh, he's in this band. He's real cool. That he's really good at music. Keep him in music. Yeah. Don't, don't make him act. I I just think Mojo Nixon does a terrible acting. I like the lyrics. Way. I like the King Koopa lyrics a lot. 
It's like you can see, you can't sing songs like you can't sing songs about King Koopa, and so they put him in the thing. Oh, freedom of speech, man. You know. <laughs> Oh. Well, okay, so like th- there, there's also a message that goes out like an APB for plumbers. It's like, oh, we're looking for plumbers. It's like, um, I guess the the tool belt's a kind of a dead fucking giveaway, dead giveaway. Mario. But you just he, scoop them right up. He, they don't they don't hear this APB or ABP or whatever the hell it is. They don't hear this, and and then like they grab Toad, and then the cop just looks at him, profiles him, and be like, "Yeah, you're coming with us." It's like, wow, this is a real yeah. not cool thing. Uh, they, like, all, place. they all they all look like they got uh, their attire from Judas Priest, mm-hmm. which is pretty badass. It's just like the sparkly police, yeah, you yes. know, on the back, and then like spikes on the shoulders. It's kinda, Hell yeah, kind of cool. I breaking the law, breaking, breaking the, the law. law. I feel like this this like whole like head, right, de- yeah, yeah, we're not gonna talk about that. I feel like this whole de evolution thing could have been so much like more frightening. You know, like, um, yeah. like, like, as a kid, was that terrifying to you? The no, thought it didn't make any fucking it, sense, right? Like, it, it could have been, it like could have been this really crazy, scary thing. Like, you don't want that. Yeah. Like, like the dip from Roger Rabbit. Right, like, right. Like, no, this is no. This is like, oh, now they're just now they now they get five feet taller and their head gets smaller and yeah. they just walk around. Right. And again, again, it's it's too. It's too much for like someone like me as a kid to process this like de evolution, de evolve, Creta- crustaceous period. What is it? Yeah, like it, it doesn't, it doesn't add anything to it, and they don't put enough emphasis on it, like you say, to make it something very scary. Other than the fact that they're turning you into like a mindless monster, which he looks pretty happy. And then they do it to Toad, and you're just like, well, I guess it's not that bad. So at least, at least he's happy. But then they do it. Then then it happens to Koopa yeah. for a second. To where his eyes change, but then it's never talked about ever again. Right. He didn't change. He didn't change ever. Why did we do that? Don't know. Can't tell you. There is no reason. Well, there's that. Uh, who, who's the bitch? Who's who's yeah, is like who's right? Lena? And why does she do the <laughs> like? Why does that's she do what that? I'm saying? I didn't, I didn't understand when he mentions Daisy, the princess, or whatever, and she's just like, nah. I'm a jealous and, bitch. Is, huh? is that it? Is that that's it? What I am. I'm jealous. Huh? And it's just like, is that serve the plot later because she steals the stone and. No, it doesn't. Man, I'm sorry, guys. This is <laughs> no. probably a bad episode. No, this is a great episode. <laughs> and in fact, I want to know if 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 by the end of this you still are like, no, you got it wrong. I want to know why. The I, Goombas are terrifying, but also a, like hilarious. That's the thing is like <laughs> I'm I, I like I, okay I, like I say I really want to try on this. I really want to try and figure this figure this out as to like you know what what's the saving grace of this movie? You know I, I'm I'm really trying to 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 put it into perspective here because at this point this whole episode is just like spoilers uh this movie fucking sucks um you, you know but at the same time I'm like I, i'm like you know what uh no the set's cool i think they're gonna make some cool references here in a second we get yoshi right <sighs> here's what's hap- here's what's been happening and here's what's going to happen we are like the cast and crew where we believe, pour me some whiskey. Where we believed in this, <laughs> we still gotta we keep. Did. We picked this. We picked this. And we're like the new yeah. one's we, coming out. We yep. believed in this script, <laughs> and I think we are all uh, with talented people like Craig, who are producing our show and everything. I go Craig. But then there's just no substance to talk about. <laughs> like, yeah. that's what's happening. Okay, right I now. got, I got a, I got a thought here. Um, where they just, they're there. They get there. This, this uh, police chase scene. You're like, okay. We got some action. We've got we've got something happening, but then they just fuck it up so bad. Like why why are all these cars electric spitting out sparks? Yeah. What is the point? And why do we show that these cars are like bumper cars that have these little things that go up yeah. and touch a metal thing to get their power? Right. But then nowhere else at all ever is there are those touching it. Are anything. they doing that again? Getting power. Yeah. And why don't they have brakes? Why is that a thing where they don't have brakes? Yeah, why why don't these cars have brakes? Like you know, th- well they use electricity because they don't burn fossil fuels. <laughs> Fossils. Uh, I just I'm trying, guys. No, yeah, I think you did better than the script did. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> all we needed was that just nah, that next line. That's all we needed. Well, you get your line with Dennis Hopper saying, "You know what I love about mud? Mm-hmm. It's clean and dirty at the same time." All right. Dennis Hopper, everybody. Dennis Hopper. Dennis Hopper. 
And 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 uh, by the way, he he has a germ problem. Yeah, I've is gathered. that like the wax with his hands? But then, please explain to me why he's first of all. Why is he pretending to be a lawyer for five seconds? Remember when he meets mm -hmm. Mario and Luigi, Larry and Lazar, and Mario goes, "Nice to meet you," and he goes, mm, "I'm not going to shake your hand." Yeah. Then Mario sits down, and then they shake hands. Right. What 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 was different between two seconds ago and now? The script. <laughs> very true. It's very fucking wow, true. Wow, you're absolutely right. So they that was that no, was recorded over the, two days, the, and on day one they're like, he's a germaphobe. Or the, two, or like, the direction. We strapped it. It's either that or the direction is like, uh, when you sit down, don't shake his hand. And then the other director is like, when you when you sit down, shake Luigi's hand though. Yeah. See. What do you want me to do? I'll do whatever. Whatever. I I don't know. And and by the way, um, uh, it, uh, Iggy and Spike. Are seem see they seem so dedicated to catching her, and bringing her and pleasing Koopa, and I believe we're about to get to the point that he he ev evolves them evolves further, them. yeah, to be smarter, right? And now that they're smarter, yeah. Now they want to save her, and they say, "Well, we've been in we've been on your father's side for a long time, like undercover agents or something. How is that? Po that's not possible." <laughs> It's not possible. And then there's, so there's your father is fungus. He's slime on the top so floor. Can we ex can we explain that? Can we try and talk no. about that? Oh. Why is there fungus everywhere? Is he because he was the king and now he's they turned him into fungus, so he's all over the city. Well, you see, uh, level level seven point one in the first game. Okay. No, does not talk about this whatsoever. Yeah. So is that's that's the mushroom aspect of like. The Mario thing. No, this was never done in Mario ever. <laughs> no, this fungus was never a thing. And they, and they he just... is her father is Bowser. Her her father is uh, King Toad. Is basically. Are what you is. sure? Because <laughs> are you sure? I'm going yeah. to read this because I think you might be wrong. Her, no, yeah, her Bowser. I'm pretty sure that because there there's Koopa, an actor that plays Bowser, him. right? Yeah. You guys keep talking. I'm going to find this. Well, th that's what I'm saying. Is like they they show they get Daisy and they show. Well, this is your father now, <laughs> and it's just a big old ball of snot. Yeah, it's nothing. Just that is somehow communicating and saving them out right. in the world. And you know, trust the trust fungus. the fungus. It was like, yeah, well, okay. Tell, tell Pedro Pascal that. Yeah. Okay, so Dennis Hopper plays King Koopa. There is a character in here played by Lance Henriksen who looks. Exactly like her dad when he when he c becomes a human again. Okay, yeah, yeah. And his name is King Bowser. The fuck is going on? What? What? His name his his character's name is King Bowser. You know Lance Henriksen too, right? What was he? B Bishop in Aliens. Oh my god, that's and, him. That's and him at the end for two seconds. So we've. <laughs> oh, we don't have time to get him in a scene. <laughs> So Why couldn't he just have been himself and like locked in a room? Right, and they, where they talk to him, they're like, "He's like, I'm King Bowser." Maybe we there's like King fungus Koopa. attached to him, and he's like, he, he's all like tentacled out or something right. like that to be more of a character. Why? It's awesome. why fla flames and <laughs> fire. There's flames on your face. It's, in fa it's flames, fire, burning my skin, your skin. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, so uh, did you recognize um, Spike or Iggy, one of those <laughs> I, actors? I, I hate I, Fisher I, Stevens. I can't okay, fucking Okay, Fisher stand Stevens. Him. I've never liked him as an actor. The only thing I remember him from uh, was he was Ben in Short, Short Circuit, in Short okay. Circuit 2. And that, that was the only thing that I recognized him from. Okay, I do like him in those movies. It, he's good in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, uh, I, I don't know him in anything like, else, I think really. it was in like Spin City. Okay. As like a... Just a small character or something like that. Somebody comment and set me straight. I, well, I think remember I, to hit the bell, and so you know when we put new movies. Let up. me know. Let us. Do you remind us about to talk about? I can't remember. If it was Thomas? There's Thomas Jane. I can't remember. It might have been the other guy. Well, he, this guy, he uh, who you're talking about, is like wish Thomas Jane. But uh, but this is like I think it's Scott Pilgrim versus the World. The two guys, the vegan police or whatever. Oh. I feel like he was one of them. But um, Stephen Edson or something. Yeah. Yeah. So either way. Um. Yeah, guys. I'm having a tough time. Can we just do something else? <laughs> do you? Um, <laughs> 
Scene four. Koop- Thanks. Koopa takes Daisy to Koopa Tower, and she meets a young Yoshi dinosaur and learns of her and her father's true identity. The Mario Bros. arrive at the tower where they rescue Daisy with the help of Toad. Oh, good. Who's now a Boomba. Who's a Goomba with, yeah, the, with a harmonica. A He's a Goomba. So when and this, they gave him his uh, harmonica just so. Oh, good. When this so dinosaur, you can identify him. Yeah. When this dinosaur came out, I was like, so this is supposed to be Yoshi? <laughs> Yeah, I didn't even th- it didn't even cross my mind. And then they say it's Yoshi. I'm like, <sighs> but Yoshi's like the best part about the fucking games. Yeah, and you don't even capitalize on that. You don't even like, you know, to, why? to see Bob Hoskins ride a dinosaur. <laughs> this is the fucking thing. It's like would they be didn't fucking even, awesome. It wasn't like they're like, oh, Yoshi. It's like he's like this big. Yeah, and it's like. How do you ride that? He's a young Yoshi. Yoshi, he's growing. Oh, he's young Yoshi. Well, I oh, heard good. I heard that this was added toward the very end when they fucking heard out they heard about Jurassic Park. See, I was you, when that came on, I'm like, here, stick, stupid. Here, take the stick. Take yes. The stick, stupid. Like and, and even like let's say Jurassic Park had never come out. This Yoshi would have been like, wow, that's fucking cool. Yeah. Like, like Yoshi looks pretty good and lovable. Um, but then like you can only imagine they probably at some point had to have gotten wind of like Jurassic Park. Like <laughs> let's see what's oh my God. Yeah. Whole Steven Spielberg. Oh shit. Oh, well, shit. fuck. Stan Winston. Oh, shit. I don't know. Let's don't, just try to do did something. They, did they film actual dinosaurs in Jurassic Park? Oh, well, you know, evolution's not real. Wow. So. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> it was. This was just like, and then so this whole scene with <laughs> Dennis Hopper and um, Martha Mathis. <laughs> Ma- yeah. Samantha Mathis. Yes. Thank yeah. you so much. Wow. Um. What a creep. What a creep. Uh, like the whole tongue thing and everything, like yeah. it was just. But it was also kind of peak Dennis Hopper for me in this. I I rather him be a creep in yeah. this movie than this movie be happening to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Slightly prophetic. Of- I feel like I got lizard tongued oh. by watching this movie. Uh, when when it, again, there's just a. It's just like a bombardment of exposition at this point, and it's it, there's no. There's no vehicle for it other than the fact that like, we better fucking explain something. He's in this been dialogue. doing that the whole King Koopa has been yeah. doing this the yeah. whole movie. The minute he's on screen, he's like, Well, and there was other dimensions, and I'm there, trying to I'm trying to merge the the realms. There used to be a video game, and then we made the video game into the movie, and then dinosaurs were here, and now I'm a king, and it's Koopa. You got that? You got- yeah. <laughs> Everybody got that? Uh even like even the song choices. Are don't do it for me. Like, first of all, there's a when they're in like the club, Megadeth, bro. They're in the club, and there's this song that sounds very much like a Lenny Kravitz song, but it's uh. not. But then they're like, <laughs> then they're like, just wait till we hit them with the main song. Everybody walk the dinosaur. Oh my god! Open the door, get on the floor. Everybody walk the dinosaur. Oh, so which terrifying. by the way was a cover of the song played by George Clinton. They got George Clinton to cover that song for this movie. Oh Damn. my god. Like, uh, I, I just, I, I, we do, we just keep going through it, and all I think at this point, all, all you do as a, as someone who's, who enjoys the game, is you're just waiting for the next little Easter egg. Yeah, all you're doing is really just waiting for those little Easter eggs at this point, and like, honestly, you know, that's why you get excited when you see when you see Yoshi. Yep. That's why you see excited when you see the uh, little mushrooms on the fungus. That's why you. But then they it it just it never goes anywhere other than showing it to you. That's right. It, it, at this point, while you're watching this for the first time in the theater, I have to imagine if you're enjoying the movie, great. But if you're not enjoying the movie and you're still there, you're waiting for another reference for the video game because you're like, there's no semblance of what I loved and why I paid the ticket to be here, and so you're waiting for that. But I guess if you're like into the movie at the time, then fine. But at this point, there's nothing. You really have nothing except like little, little things here and there. Yeah. And that's not. It's just not enough. If especially if that's why, I have. I have to imagine that's why they fucking made this movie to bank on Super Mario why Brothers. Else would you make this exactly? Movie? Well, because Nintendo, Nintendo, when making when when they started getting approached about this, and like they said, I mean, the movie can't fail. It's like Mario is. We've one of built these, something gigantic. It's 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 bigger than it's one of the largest things, uh, pop culture icons well, of the '90s, and, and, and even a little bit before that. And you're like, you have to think about that. And they're like, we can do whatever. And they didn't go to the highest bidder. 
They didn't go like these were not the highest bidders. To add on to that, they said we want some creative vision in this, and we want it to be good. They heard a pitch, and they went with this model. That's what happened. And then and then avoided it completely. Just said it'll be fine. Yeah. They to never add, to add on to that it was just like they even if this movie failed, they'd be okay. So they're like, we don't give a fuck what you do. Exactly. <laughs> and they were completely exactly. right. Exactly. This is just erased from existence. It really is. It, even even when they do have those payoffs, Sean, like you were saying, we finally get this iconic moment of them in their red and green. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're their plumbers. Yet they're not even like in their sing- traditional clothing. Like they're not wearing these overalls. They're, wearing, overalls. they're wearing fucking weird ass starter jackets. Yeah. Like it's it's not even they're they just like go go for it. Oh, it's this red and green jackets instead of mm. okay at, at no point do you feel them go all in no you know what i mean that uh, you just really don't feel that and again it's 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 just a lot of of nonsense of like yeah idea of idea evolved king bowser apparently now i'm realizing this <laughs> we de-evolved the- him <laughs> into mucus or like this fungus like the most like pre that can communicate thing, and, talk. and it can still yeah. communicate yep. and um and and then like what's the point of Daisy saying, guys, I want you to meet my dad. <laughs> dad, yeah. c- come on out, Dad. <laughs> Didn't even know I had a dad, and now that I found it out, and it's just a weird penis fungus that comes down. Yeah, I'm I'm in, I love him. Looks like just I really want to get to know him. To talk more about the filmmaking too, where it's just like when they escape this dance scene, when they're like on like the railing or whatever. <laughs> They have a scene where it's just like the classic tell and show method for the script, where it's like cops on one side, and then goobas come out on the other, and then uh, uh, John Lug- or uh, Bob House is like, "Oh, the Rock," and then L- John Leguizamo is like, "Oh, the-, the Daisy. We need to get Daisy." And so it's like all of these, it's all of the plot points all in one, and then they're like, "Oh, dump truck, jump!" It's like we, <laughs> if you just didn't tell us all of that as we're being shown it. We, I wouldn't feel like I would be spoon fed my fucking idiocy. You're it, even in the point of of uh, Dennis Hopper saying Goomba. <laughs> Just so you know. It. Just so you know, this is a Goomba. And, and it, by the way, he's the Koopa King. We never see Koopas. No. Nope. We never see the turtley <laughs> turtles. Ever. In in the uh, Luigi's. Basically, like, look, I told you, this fungus is trying to communicate with us. Look, look at this mushroom; it's trying to communicate with yeah. us. Let me kill it by right. ripping it out of its web that it's attached. <laughs> let me rip let it me, out of there so that it can't communicate with us anymore. And by the way, at and and also they do it where uh where, look, Mario Brothers is a simple concept. Okay, it's plumbers who ru- follow like want to save a princess, get high on mushrooms. And you know they concept. get high, get big, you know, get high on mushrooms, and they and they stomp on turtles. It's a fucking That's great concept. That's a simple concept, guys. And, but instead, you can't even take the most simple thing that this mushroom is basically like spinach for Popeye. Instead, you say, "I don't really know how that would work, so let's just make the mushroom get big." What? What are you talking <laughs> about? Like, it's, there's nothing that connects. There's nothing, guys. Absolutely. I'm nothing. so upset. <laughs> let's, let's finish this. <laughs> okay. Scene five. Eventually, the two worlds do merge into one, but Luigi and Daisy remove the fragment from the meteorite, and the worlds separate again after Koopa does some damage. Back in Dino Hatton, Mario defeats Koopa, Daisy stays, and Mario and Luigi return home. The one big thing I want to talk about is wh- why this movie felt the need to bring up one of the most confusing things I've ever heard recently. That apparently Mario and Luigi's last name are both Mario. Yes. Yeah. Mario Mario, Mario, Mario. and Luigi Mario. Yet, it, it makes sense because they're the Mario brothers. Right. They literally made this up in this movie. Yeah. And they made this shit up, this stupid fucking premise of them having the last name of Mario, to where then the Nintendo creator, like 10 years later, was like, you know what? Fine. That's right. And that's now canon. They put it canon. It is now canon. Oh, in, no. They decided that their last name was Mario. Why, 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 do, why did we have to do this? <laughs> and then you got, then you got just like John Leguizamo, who I love, but man, he's just like that weird scene where they're, they're like, who are you? And he goes, 
I'm Luigi Mario. You got a problem with that? The guy was like, just like, he was just asking who you were. And he's saying. I really don't. I just want to know who you were. I don't have a problem at all. Again, they can't even get that reference right. I'm Luigi. Like, that's what. I'm a it, Luigi. He says, I'm, I'm a Luigi, Luigi Mario. Mario. Okay, great. Um, like, I thought it was a funny thing that, like, when that happened between them and, and when they go into the police station, I did think that was a bit of a funny back and forth. Um, but again, it's like these, like, it just, it, it, I, they wrote it and they got away and with then it. They, then they tried to say, they almost tried to explain that they're, they're like 20 years difference in real life, age wise. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, "Well, you're you're my brother, but you're my cousin, but my dad, but my brother." Like, it's. Do you remember that? If there, he's dinner. like, "Yeah, well, then our parents died, and then I took you and made you my dad." And it was like, it was just, it didn't even make sense why Mario why they were saying me. this. Why yeah. do we even have to talk about this? And then the the explanation of it still didn't make sense. And there's also there's also the fact that um, they separate again. <laughs> Like, they don't even do this together, most of this movie. Mario separates out because he's like, oh, I got to go get Daniela. I got to go save this other girl. And, but again, it's not Peach. It's just, he separates out. And then, again, I think most of this movie was just focused around Luigi and and uh, uh, Daisy. Yeah. I, I feel like Mario's an afterthought. There's like one thing that I thought to myself while watching this. I'm like, God, wouldn't it be, wouldn't Mario Brothers be a super fucking boring game if all you did was go around and fix shit with wrenches? And then I thought to myself, <laughs> wouldn't this be a super fucking stupid, boring movie if all they did was go around, fix shit with wrenches and <laughs> have no sense being made at all right. without the entire movie? And that's what this was. <laughs> but added at, like, on acid. Like on yeah. on cocaine and acid and Molly all at the same time with dinosaurs in it. The the um. <laughs> well, Sean and you know Sean, you know that um, you know that what we evolved from is slime. Yeah, you know that, right? Sure. We didn't evolve from you know <laughs> from molecules and Big Bang. We evolved from slime. Um. <laughs> <laughs> is it like can do you got something well i i'm trying to i'm trying to i'm trying to put together the whole uh the the meteorite fragment piece thing. and how that why um why are you doing no, no, that? no put it well, put it i want to hear this what do you got well so i'll allow it lena <laughs> lena can stand getting electrocuted by the uh by the uh the car grid that has no purpose, <laughs> but but uh, but she can't. the The meteorite yeah. was too much for her, and we're, she we're became We're merging a fossil. dimensions, bro. Like, oh, that's yeah. a lot more powerful. We're than crossing the streams. Grid. We're merging, <laughs> which is what I say when when doing <laughs> when you. Wow. Yeah. Um, wow. Just trying to liven this up. Wow. <laughs> you gotta you gotta do something at this point. Um. But but like and then and then this is the point though like it all merges together and Lena's dead. Thank God she had a lot of purpose in this, and Looking. thank God she was jealous about something. And I don't know. And then everybody. But why does why do why do only a few of them start? Why do they start to disintegrate? <laughs> why did they start to disintegrate? They weren't near the meteorite. They were just battling it out on this on the scaffolding. Right, because somewhere, Mario someone, and you know, wait a somewhere, someone had a picture of all of them together. Okay, and as time kind of changes, it kind of yeah. it it you you disappear, kind of like in Back to the AJ, Future. You're absolutely George. right. Like why, why did they why did they go? Why did only a few of them go into right. the other dimension? And then why did they get drawn back into the other dimension when they could have just? We know how easy it is to just you walk just through the go portal. through the portal. We know how easy this is. Yeah. And did he turn back from a monkey? Scar- uh, Scarpelli? Scarpelli? Or is he permanently a monkey now? Scarpellini, I think, is just permanently a monkey. That's tight. I yeah. don't care. <laughs> no, and I don't care. It's but and that's the thing, it's like, oh, oh, uh, now we're all now we're all dissolving and we we but they're not merging, they just transported over to the so other. So wouldn't they just go back to the universe? Other? Right. So like 
And so then why did they go back? Why did they go back? Why couldn't did they, they just... pull? Oh, did they they get the fragment back? Yeah, but it's still, the fragment, yeah. So why did they go back? Why weren't they just caught in that world? Yeah, why now? didn't they just stay in the new one now? And why is there a portal open if? Why is there a portal <laughs> open if you can dissolve and? And again, you, we brought it up earlier. Why not just go through the portal and take it over? Like, bring all your fucking goombas. Bring in your that way. fucking goombas. Just I would be terrifying to see a bunch of like a thousand goombas walking down yeah. the street. Nobody would fuck with them. No. Well, but now they're dancing in elevators, so um, totally different. What do you think a Goomba's fart smells like? Um, I think it smells like whatever whatever toad <laughs> brought Daisy to eat. Mm. It smells like that um, after being eaten by Yoshi. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I think I'm like I'm like it probably sm- actually. You know what? It smells like Toad's microphone. Or uh, uh, a harmonica. Yeah, okay. That's what it smells like. I think either, like, if you've ever owned, like, a Komodo dragon. Okay. Like, a couple of them. Like, their dead skin. Like, that kind of, like, like weird. That's what it smells like. Kind of sour, dank smell mixed with, uh, mixed with, like, a, um, like a cow pie. Yeah. Just when you thought this movie couldn't get any worse, Mm -hmm. they went and totally set it up for a sequel. Mm Mm-hmm. They were confident. They were so confident that this movie was going to have a sequel, just like Back to the Future. And so they said, well, we'll do the Back to the Future ending, where I'll come back and say, but wait, there's more. There's more. Mario, you turn out fine in the other dimension, but your kids. Your kids. There's something that has to be done with your kids. It's your kids, Luigi. Mario, Luigi. Your kids. Uh, this literally sets up that everything was fine. Like the the people have won in Dino Hat ha, Dino Hatton or whatever. Fine. Everything's fine. They're painting over King Koopa. This is great. King Bowser, the good guy, is back. <sighs> and like everything is fine. This is an exchange from Daisy and Mario and Luigi. This is like the literally the last uh, lines that anybody says. You're never gonna believe this. I will. You will. Yep. Credits. I'm a believer in credits. Credits. Um, and did you see the... <laughs> did you see it? Yes. Did you see it? See a- after credits? After no. credit scene? No. This is Marvel Universe coming at you, like, before anyone else was doing this shit. Oh, yeah. This is a way ahead of its time. Please explain. So, at the end of the credits, thank God uh, my wife um, was there, uh, was sitting there. Because you got up to go through. Very up. tired. Yep. I, I got up because I just couldn't keep it in. <laughs> Um, I was I was more than ready to be done, and luckily she was still sitting there um, on the couch, um, and the credits were rolling. And sure enough, there was a post credit scene that she said, "Hey, did you see the post credit scene?" And I was like, "No, no." <laughs> and I said, "God damn it!" And so I had to go back and I watched it. And it's some of the creators, I believe it's the creator of Mario, yes. uh, uh, Marimoto, Marimoto, Miyamoto, Miyamoto. Miyamoto. Thank you. And uh, and Craig has been so mad this <laughs> Craig entire thing. Entire so out. mad. Craig, 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 have you ever seen this movie? No, but I played a lot of Mario. Don't watch yeah, it. Don't do it to yourself. <laughs> so basically, what it is, uh, uh, it's Miyamoto, and he's like, "Well, we love we love what's been going on. We would love to create basically a video game in your in your uh, uh, resemblance or whatever." And it goes, and it's uh, Iggy and Spike. And they say, why don't we call it the uh, Koopa Cousins? The Super Koopa Cousins. And we cut. Okay. I feel bad for this episode. I I feel bad that we're putting this out. No. I feel like that we couldn't... We got... Are we good anymore? No. This is this is my fault. I said, "Hey, new Mario Brothers is coming out. We should do it." We tried. Koopa Cousins. Guys, let's let's we've talked about this movie as far as we can. We have to give this a modern day rating. We have to think about the worst movies we have done and see how this pits up against it. So, AJ, I'm going to start with you. We've dissected this. What is your modern day rating? You were an 8.6 as a kid only cuz you were lying to yourself. Correct. What is your modern day rating on this? So can you pull up yes. my oh, bottoms? Oh, yeah, believe me, I already got it. So AJ, pull up my power bottoms. <laughs> AJ, you, <laughs> you gave That's me. Blank Check a 2.1, Three Ninjas a 2.4, American Pie a 3.2, Cocktail a 
Do I want to watch this as much or more or less than some of those movies? Um, all right. Well, as I as I think about that, well, let me think out loud on it. Honestly, um, there's so much of this. Like about every single time you get to a point that you're that you you start to feel a little committed to it, they just they literally flip the script on you. Um, in the most literal sense, that's what they do. And you read about this, and you you honestly, this might be the most interesting story behind a movie I think we've covered up to this point. It's definitely up there as far as interesting. Cast and crew made shirts dogging on the directors. <laughs> yeah, they called them names. They like behind their their backs. Like I mean, they were they were ruthless to it. There was so much like bad stuff happening on this set. It basically was like a cursed production. Um, it's they're they're so often even even references that should have been very clear were not. Um, Big Bertha, the girl, the woman, the heavies. Right, she she was a reference to a character, one of the uh, like a fish character in the in the video game, way over your head. A fish character was she corpulent? What's that? Was she corpulent? Corpulent. Yeah, that was a quote. That was a line in the movie. Oh, okay, <laughs> corpulent. Yes, that's right. Went over your head. That's that's amazing. Oh, that's super weird. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, guys, I I really I tried several times to pull out of this like kind of negativity about this movie, and it's really hard to do. The only things that came that were good that came out of this were honestly Bob Hoskins, yep. John Leguizamo, Dennis Hopper, and even then, unfortunately, as much as the cast and, and uh, Samantha Mathis, uh, as much as you want to you know, use that as a platform to say that this has a good rewatchable value to it. Uh, I'm so sad for them because I don't think that it does. So that being said, uh, what was my lowest? Uh, 2.1 was blank check. And three ninjas was three ninjas was 2.4. Wow. Um, I think, uh, I think that this is. Uh, I I can't say that I want to watch this more or less than Blank Check. So I'm going to give it a, give it a two point one. So you're tying it with Blank Check for the worst movie that we've done so far for yourself. Yeah. Okay. Sean, what about you, man? Could you pull mine up, please? You got it, my friends. Um, I reflect everything that uh, AJ has Sorry, said. Sorry, it was long winded. No, yeah. it's okay. Um, but- that is pretty much how I feel about this, and I I really think the best aspects about this is that you take. Uh, an IP like the Mario Brothers, and you want to do something different with it. I respect that. 100%. And you put this budget to it, and you create this kind of great, elaborate other world. The sets are amazing. I really liked all of that. Um, and then the the actors that you choose. I uh, I really I think they did a great job at casting. I really do. Dennis Hopper, maybe not. But, um, yeah, Bob Hoskins and John Leguizamo, I think, are a perfect Mario and Luigi. Uh, and that's just about it, man. And I never want to watch this movie again. That's tough, isn't it? You gave Three Ninjas a three. That's your lowest rated movie. Blank Check a 3.5. Cocktail a 3.7. Explorers a 3.9. Christmas Vacation 4.6. I know that's you want to change Christmas Vacation to a zero, correct? Someday you want to change that. Perhaps. You hate No, that this movie. is worse than Kay. Christmas Vacation. Wow. I'm going to go. I'm going to go two. Two. I. I really hate to, I I'm you guys thought coming into this show that I would be more critical about movies than you guys and I tend to say that these movies should be propped up more than they should. I really just think this is just so all over the place where it's just there's no redeemable factor to it at all. And if you love it, you love it and that's well, fine. Well, that's the thing, Sean. I think there are a lot of people out there that like this movie for the for the like for the badness of it there there's a whole there's a whole culture there, of like liking a movie because it's so bad and no, this this had some resurgence for did. that it really did it had some resurgence as as some cult classic you know you know feature but yeah I, but, I don't even think it for me anyway it doesn't even fall into that ca- yeah. category because even yeah, those so like bad it's serious. good those so bad it's good movies are straightforward mm-hmm. but they're like the way they're made is kind of like off. This movie is just so all over the place. You can't even grasp a single aspect of it. Right. That's yeah. why I don't like it. Yeah, it, it's just when when a movie when a movie is so bad that the people that created it never do a film ever again. 
which happened on this. That's yeah. something to be said. That's your directors. When, when your actors actually come out and go, this was the worst experience of my life, that is there's something to be said about that. Because those two <laughs> things do not happen very often. And so, yeah, this is my lowest rated movie. This is a two for me. Uh, we got to see what David Gould says, executive producer. He says, sitting down to a random bootleg copy of this movie on some <laughs> random website, I took a swig of Cedar Ridge <laughs> to wash the bad taste of nostalgia from my mouth. Mm. Watching along, all I could think is whoever pitched this version of Super Mario to the studio executives must have spent the weekend doing illicit drugs, playing old school Nintendo, and binging movies like Demolition Man, Blade Runner, and The Running Man. You nailed it. But I will say this, if you take the haphazard attempt at making this a Mario movie, you would have the potential of a film younger me would have truly enjoyed. With the all-star cast, Bob Hoskins was truly the Stanley Tucci of, uh, of his time and a cinematic treasure taking every role so seriously and making it fun. Johnny Legs was young, fun, <laughs> and absurd. And the whole time I was waiting for Dennis Hopper to say, Pop quiz, hot shot. <laughs> yes. I wish my modern eye would have loved this movie more, but two factors bumped my rating up. A, Bob Hoskins, and two, using actual Mario lore to pull Daisy into the story for Luigi. So with all of this, my modern day rating is a 4.25. Also, can I get the plunger gun rack as my prop? Mm. Nice. Guys, we, even uh. with his higher rating, we are a 2.59 which I think oh is going to be of no concern to anyone. 2.59. Hold on a second. Let's find this out. Modern day ratings for us. That is going to take us to the very bottom. That is the worst movie we've wow. done and rated. Three Ninjas being a 2.8. There you Man. go, Chris. Three Ninjas is back. <laughs> Three Ninjas I, uh, is back, baby. It's back, baby. <laughs> Wait till we get to Mega Mountain. Guys, I want you to understand that this, this show is really a family affair. And the fact that... My my wife spent her hard earned four dollars to buy this DVD for me, so I could in fact watch it, and uh, that takes a lot. I can't believe she she would like anyone would spend Honey, money. Honey, I on bought that. it for you. And I, you know, because you can't find it. That's anywhere. what Alicia sounds like. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly. Honey. That. That's really good. Uh, I thought she was in the room. And so yeah, I know. So, oh, uh, <laughs> so I just want you guys to know that four dollars. You can own this as well, this like, masterpiece. I'll I, sell it to you. Yeah, I'll sell it I to you. I don't want so it anymore. Three Ninjas, I loved talking about Three Ninjas with you guys. I love doing the show, but this, I, I, even talking about Super Mario Brothers didn't make me like it anymore. And that usually happens yes, with like, yes. like, a, like Encino Man. I liked talking about it, and it raised my rating. This had nothing. There's something to be said about that. So, yeah. Well, we hope you enjoyed the episode. I'm Thanks sorry. for being here. Tune in next week. We're going to. We're going to go a Harry Potter. First Harry Potter. That oh, is an man. AJ choice. We're going to try to... Chris Columbus. Let's go. Let's yes. go, baby. And we're going to follow that up with Fargo. Oh, my. Oh, my. Can you believe oh, it? Oh, my. And if you're new to the podcast, go back this time last year to talk about a truly good movie, Tommy Boy. Yep. This time last year. We had a lot yeah. of fun with Tommy Boy. Yeah. Same same music. Same, the... same music. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget, we have a voicemail. Call us at 319-804-9596. Nice. Leave us some feedback like today's caller. KJ, Sean, how the heck are you guys? This is Big Caesar from the Lone Star State of Texas. Just Jeez. got done listening to the Mrs. Doubtfire podcast. My One of my favorite movies in the, growing up. Loved it. Can't wait for y'all to do my other favorite 90s movie, My Cousin Vinny. Hopefully y'all do it soon. Just wanted to say, love listening to the podcast. I look forward to every Wednesday when a new episode comes out. Can't wait. One thing I was disappointed about the Mrs. Mrs. Doubtfire podcast was y'all didn't talk about the deleted scenes of that movie. Mm -hmm. They had tremendous deleted scenes, man. My all-time favorite one was definitely when Daniel was talking to Liddy after she lost in the stunning beat. In my opinion, that scene should have been in the movie. But anyway, guys, y'all are doing a great job. Keep up the good work. Looking forward to more of y'all's great podcasts on Wednesday. Later. Thanks, Thanks, dude. Is that Big Caesar? Is that what he I said? think that's what he said. Big, Big Caesar. Caesar. Yeah. Big Caesar. So we got hey, that man. wrong. Sorry. Uh, drive safe. And um, <laughs> yeah, I, I should have looked up the deleted scenes. 
Uh, well, yeah, and we talked a little bit about the fact that like that movie should have been probably like three and a half hours long. Yes. That was like the original yeah. cut, and there was also like multiple cuts. And I, I, I wish, I wish there was all that. And I wish, I wish we had the three and a half hour cut. Definitely, to be honest. So. Um, thanks again for calling in, man. We really appreciate you guys listening to this. If you've stomached this whole episode with us, then by God, give us a five-star review. <laughs> Write us a five-star review um, and so we can uh, read it because we love reading it. And Guys, find us on social media, at Confused Breakfast, anywhere, Instagram, Facebook, all those good places. Social find media. us on those social meds, at Confused Breakfast, and check us out on YouTube. Go to ConfusedBreakfast.com and check out our merch buy our shirts you can buy our shirt with our logo on it you can buy our shirt with some of our sayings on it like damn dang it you can buy some coffee mugs as well uh go and check out our ratings at confusedbreakfast.com we just put this as the lowest rated movie combined on the show and i think it deserves it uh you can also look at our individual ratings of every movie we've ever done and I love you. And I'm sorry about this episode. No. no, it's okay. There's two things you can directly spend your money on that not only put stuff in your pocket, but also put um, support into this podcast. One, buy stuff from our sponsors. Use those promo codes. That gets you something for your money and also shows how awesome we are to our sponsors. Number two, join the Patreon. That is the best place to get bonus audio. We're going to talk about, oh, let's talk about video game movies after this Yeah, for uh, our bonus audio podcast. So you get to listen to that bonus conversation. If you join Patreon, you got backlogs of everything. You got voting on upcoming movies, private Discord server, so much more. Patreon.com slash Confused Breakfast. We are produced by Upload Media Group in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. We got Agro Craig on the controls. Yeah. So mad at our talking about Mario Brothers. <laughs> Sorry, Craig. UploadMediaGroup.com. Also, we are on the Cloud 10 iHeart Media Podcast Network. Check that out at Cloud10.fm. That's it for us. Goodbye. Deuces. It's a me. It's a me. Luigi. It's a me. AJ. I'm peeing. Sorry. PP. It's a me.